Okay, this video is going to be about respiratory system adaptations to exercise. That is um, ways in which the respiratory system adapts over time um, as a result of long term training or exercise, um, how their the anatomy and the structure of the system adapts to enable the system to work more efficiently. So different to responses because responses are short term physiological changes that go back uh, after a single bout of exercise. What we're talking about today is adaptations, things that change and change pretty much or at least reasonably permanently. So the first adaptation is simply an increased vital capacity. Um, and the vital capacity, you'll remember, is one of the lung volumes. Um, and we think of the vital capacity as being the amount of air that once we've taken a maximal inhalation, so once we've breathed in and filled our lungs with as much air as we possibly can, um, that's our total lung capacity, then we breathe out as forcefully as possible. And the total volume of air that we breathe out um, is not quite as much as the total lung volume because there's some air that remains behind, um, residual volume. But the total amount of air that we breathe out, that is vital capacity. And you can see it there on the diagram um, in yellow. And it represents the total amount of air that we can breathe out after a maximal inhalation. Um, typically, um, vital capacity is less in females than it is in males, certainly in adults. Um, and so therefore that will have an impact on the total amount of air um, that can be exchanged. Um, but really, in terms of adaptations, this is a relatively minimal, of relatively minimal benefit um, because um, the vital capacity really doesn't change too much. It's pretty much fixed due to genetic factors. So there may be some minimal increase in vital capacity um, and, and certainly very limited increase. Um, and that's because essentially lung volume, total lung volume is pretty much fixed. Uh, there are some diseases and some short-term problems associated with the lungs that can be overcome potentially and some that can't um, that will affect or inhibit or reduce vital capacity. But in terms of adaptation, it's very minimal um, in terms of how much we can actually increase our vital capacity, but maybe just a tiny little bit. Um, a more significant adaptation is this second one, uh, and that is that we we, we develop stronger respiratory muscles and there are sets of muscles in and around the rib cage that are specifically designed uh, to contract to enable the, the rib cage to move and those are the respiratory muscles and particularly we're thinking about the diaphragm uh, which is a dome shaped muscle at the bottom of the rib cage um, the bottom of the thoracic cavity and then in between the ribs we have the intercostal muscles and you'll know that there are external intercostal muscles which help to lift the rib cage up um, and there are internal intercostal muscles that help to pull the rib cage down um, sometimes when we need it um, during exercise. When we increase the strength of these respiratory muscles, this simply means that, for example, the external intercostals and the diaphragm, when they contract, the diaphragm flattens uh, and the external intercostal muscles lift the ribcage up, therefore increasing uh, the, the volume within, uh, within the lungs, um, within the thoracic cavity, uh, and therefore dropping the pressure. So the pressure drops when the volume increases. And so because of that pressure drop, air then flows into the lungs to try and equalise pressure inside and outside of the body. So if we can have stronger respiratory muscles that do that process faster, lift the rib cage faster and maybe a little bit further, um, the diaphragm can flatten faster and maybe a little bit more flat. Um, we are increasing the total, um, total volume within uh, the lungs. And that means the air will then, that, that gradient um, that's created between the outside air and the air inside the lungs, that gradient is greater, so air flows in faster. So stronger respiratory muscles basically has the benefit of meaning that air flows faster both in and also out of the lungs. And this, unlike the other one, does have a significantly large impact 
um, on the respiratory system in its efficiency. So this accounts for the majority of long term adaptation in your respiratory function, these stronger respiratory muscles. But there's one more just to mention um, in terms of a long term change and adaptation uh, of the respiratory system, and that is um, we can have faster oxygen and carbon dioxide diffusion. Um, uh, that is the speed at which uh, oxygen travels from the alveoli into the bloodstream and also conversely the speed at which the carbon dioxide, the byproduct of respiration, can be moved from the bloodstream into the alveoli and then breathed out. That can happen faster. And the main way that happens is that we have what's called capillarization of the alveoli. And capillarization just means the growth of new capillaries. So a more general term for that would be angiogenesis, the growth of new vessels. Um, so capillaries grow, more of them grow around uh, and embed themselves around the alveoli in the lungs. And as a result, therefore, there is a greater amount of blood um, being brought to meet the air that's breathed in. And so if we've got this greater amount of blood, we can more efficiently and more effectively offload the oxygen that we've breathed in into the bloodstream and have it moved on more quickly. So we can move it on more quickly and in doing so we maintain a nice big steep diffusion gradient between the oxygen um, content of the lungs and the oxygen content of the bloodstream. And the same is true conversely for carbon dioxide. When, when we're exercising, we're producing a whole load of carbon dioxide through uh, faster respiration and the production of energy in the muscles. We get loads more carbon dioxide in the blood. And so therefore the gradient um, is, is increased. So we can get rid of that carbon dioxide faster and, and certainly get the oxygen into the bloodstream a lot more quickly because we have faster diffusion as a result of bringing more blood to the alveoli. The blood gets there, as I've said, because the capillaries are growing, there's more of them, more blood flow, um, and that enables the respiratory system to be more efficient, more effective at doing its job. Um, that's it for the respiratory system. Um, I hope those have been uh, helpful for you, um, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.